Okay, hi everyone and welcome to the University of Glasgow Facebook Live. Today, for the next 45 minutes or so, uh, we're going to be answering your questions. Some of you have already asked some questions already, uh, so we've got some plans. But for the next 45 minutes, we'll be here uh, to answer anything you have. So while I introduce the panel, if you already have a question in mind, get typing away, leave it in the comment box and we'll get to it. Uh, but welcome to everyone from all around the world, uh, wherever you are, even if you just want us to give us a wee shout out, uh, we're happy to do that as well. So just get engaged, leave a comment and uh, bef before we begin, uh, I'll introduce our panel. First of all, myself, um, I am Gavin Quinn, I'm part of the University of Glasgow's student recruitment team. So if I am a bit familiar to you, especially if maybe you're from Northern Ireland or England or in Scotland, uh, you might have seen me at a careers fair or a UCAS fair. So that's where I'm from. I'm Cal Moore. I'm a very recent graduate of the University of Glasgow. I did sociology and digital media and now I'm a student communications officer. Hi everyone, I'm Scott. I'm currently the president of the SRC or known as the Students' Representative Council. Um, it is one of the student bodies that exists in the university to represent you, the students. Uh, everyone that will be joining us in September will be a member of the SRC so you will be seeing a lot of me. And my name is Monica Anderson, I'm a widening participation officer at the university and I'm also an alumni from the university. Excellent. So as you can see, we have a fantastic panel being able to answer just about any question you might have about coming to the university this September. Uh, one of the ones that everyone always does ask, so we will start with it, is Freshers' Week. Uh, it's probably the biggest, um, most exciting time of the year for everyone. Um, and I'll probably miss it, Scott, because yeah. this is your jam. So Absolutely. what is Freshers' Week and tell us a bit about it. So Freshers' Week uh, is essentially, it almost seems a bit of a rite of passage, but it, is, it will be your first week at university. Um, which this year is the 16th to the 21st of September. Um, there, no teaching happens in this week specifically, so everyone gets to enjoy Freshers' Week. Uh, and essentially what it is, it's an opportunity for you to make friends and experience uh, all the, the goodness that the university has to offer, experience the four student bodies, which I'll explain in a second. But basically it is just a week full of really fun events, orientation activities, inductions, just to get you accustomed with the university. Uh, it is ran by the four student bodies, which exists at the University of Glasgow, so no, at an, uh, other universities you have one student union. We're quite lucky at Glasgow where we have four student bodies. Um, as, as I said before, I'm the president of the SRC, which is one of the four. The other three student bodies are the Queen Margaret Union, the Glasgow University Union and the Glasgow University Sports Association. And together we put on a week of events and activities for you to enjoy. Um, we put on a lot of free events during the days. Um, we have quite big events such as the Fresh Address, which is your official introduction to the university with the principal, the rector, and all the presidents of the student bodies. Uh, you also have things like the Freshers uh, Fair, which is a great opportunity to meet all the clubs and societies that exist at the university. And then you have a whole suite of amazing evening activities, uh, which are run specifically by the Glasgow University Union and the Queen Margaret Union. So if you like a night out or if you, if you fancy you know, going to see a DJ or uh, seeing some live bands, um, that, that's for you. Uh, I think it's worth saying that the evening activities um, are paid for only through the Freshers wristband, which this year costs £45, but I can assure you is, it is absolutely worth it. The quality of event mm -hmm. that the unions put on for the evening is, uh, you know, you will not get an opportunity to go to a suite of events like that. And, you know, in the past we've had people such as BBC Radio 1 DJs, um, we've had teachers, prides, um, in fact, comedy acts, magicians. Um, I'm just trying to think. There's, there's so many really <laughs> good examples, but... Yeah. Uh, the, the student bodies, specifically the GU and the QMU, really try hard to bring in some absolutely amazing current acts that you enjoy and will be listening to the music to on a daily basis. So, yeah. yeah. Perfect. So, do, do you guys remember your own freshers? First? Parts of it, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but no, it's a really great opportunity just to meet other people as well. So it is, remember that a lot of people are going to be coming in. You're not going to know anybody. So Freshers' Week is a really great opportunity to meet some friends. And I can say from my own experience mm -hmm. that I met people at Freshers' Week who I stayed friends with during my degree and I'm still friends with now. So I would definitely mm -hmm. recommend coming along. Yeah. And for anybody who is... A local student so anybody who's going to be commuting into the university we also have our local student orientation and that will be on Friday the 13th of September so the Friday before fresher week starts so that's information specifically aimed at anybody who will be commuting into the university so it's definitely worth coming to if that's what you're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. 
Cool. So it's a good time to see the West End, mm -hmm. find your kind of feet in the mm -hmm. kind of West End of Glasgow. Absolutely. But there's also quite a lot going on in the centre as well. So there'll be quite a lot of club nights and mm -hmm. kind of things mm -hmm. to get you acquainted with the city of Glasgow. Mm -hmm. um, fantastic. Some of that you kind of mentioned at Freshers Fair, you can join clubs and societies. What kind of clubs and societies are on offer at Glasgow? Uh, I'll take this one then. Yeah. Okay? Sure. So um, at the university, if you don't know what a club or society is, um, well, we have 300 at the University of Glasgow first and foremost, which is quite a large number. And essentially, uh, societies are kind of groupings of students that come together over a shared interest. Um, so there are a lot of different categories for clubs and societies. You can get academic clubs and societies that um, exist to provide a social environment for your course. Uh, we have clubs and societies which are specifically just because people like Doctor Who or Shrek um, things like that. So yeah, there's a whole range of clubs and societies to, mm -hmm. to join and whatever interests you have, there will be something for you. And uh, the other thing that we like to say to students is if, if a club or society doesn't exist, create one, start one yourself. Yeah, cool. Um, that's probably answered. Um, cool. Cassie has asked a question about social aspects of life while you study. Mm -hmm. So these clubs and societies, they're a fantastic way to kind of keep up that social life, keep up your interests while you're also doing your studies. Um, and the kind of balance between social life and studies, is that quite easily to find, do you find? Um, I think so, yeah. So most clubs and societies, um, I was in several that were a lot more structured, but you had your set hours that you went to clubs and societies and then out with those you could do, you know, the library's open from like really early in the morning to really late at night. So you just really find what working pattern works for you and then you can do all your classes and everything then. Yeah. The, there's definitely some occasions where it does kind of help your studies. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the times I've been in the library, I've seen like the rugby team huddled around a table <laughs> helping each other study. So <laughs> it is quite cute to see that, but it's also quite a good thing to kind of help each other out. So it's good to have that kind of social bond while you're at university. It's also helpful with societies and clubs that you meet people from other courses, but also you meet people who are maybe a bit ahead of you. Mm -hmm. So I remember that I was really lucky and I was in a club and society with someone who was in third year when I was in first year and they were so great for going for advice too. So it is really worthwhile. Yeah. I think it's also worth saying that we have 50 sports clubs at the university, um, you know, covering a whole range of sports from lacrosse to football, anything you can think of, and they're facilitated by the Glasgow University Sports Association. Um, and we have a complex outside of the university at Gas Cube where a lot of these sports clubs go to. And that's also, you know, a really good thing to get involved in on top of societies mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, we've had a nice wee comment from Laura. Um, she has asked, she, well, she said, I'm going to miss the first few hours of Freshers Week on Monday the 16th because she's sitting on her driving test. Oh. Exciting. Oh. Um, so she's a wee bit worried. Uh, will she miss anything big? And is there still time for her to get involved when she gets back? It's a plenty of time I mean, for that. first few hours. Uh, so if you're just missing the first few hours, trust me, there is plenty mm -hmm. happening during Freshers Week. You're not going to miss out on very much. I think the first major event during Freshers Week is the Freshers Address, which I believe is around the 12 o'clock mark. So if you can make that, uh, please do. But it is filmed, so you're not going to miss that either. It will be available to watch afterwards after you uh, hopefully successfully complete your driver's <laughs> yeah. test. So good luck to good that. <laughs> Yeah, and whatever the outcome, you'll have plenty of friends to make as well. So you'll always just you'll have a cheery face by the end of the day. So mm -hmm. that's good. Um, excellent. Amira is asking about freshers as well. So thank you, Amira. Um, should freshers be read? Like, should you register um, for freshers? And if so, how do you do that? I don't know. So. I'm going to interpret that as register for Freshers Week um, using the wristband. Um, I would highly recommend it, and from a personal point of view, I think Freshers Week for me through my university career was one of the best weeks that I had whilst at Glasgow. Mm -hmm. um, it does. It could seem a little bit uh, steep in terms of £45 for the wristband, but you do get a selection of 10 amazing nights to go to over the week. Um, you could either go to the QMU or the GEU, and I would honestly highly recommend it if you think that's your thing, because the people you meet, I remember meeting um, some of my best mates, and we, we stayed in touch throughout the whole of university. Mm -hmm. It's a real opportunity. I think what is worth saying uh, in regards to Freshers Week is that it is pretty much exclusively for first year students only. You're not gonna get that kind of environment anywhere else. So if you want to meet people who are in the same boat as you, they're new to university, new to the environment, new to the experience, looking to make friends, then Freshers Week is most certainly the thing to get involved in. In terms of registering, you only have to do that for the evening events with the wristband. As I mentioned before, all the daytime events are completely free, so yeah. Perfect. And you also answered Ben's question, who was asking about the cost of, of wristbands, so you've, you've, you've nailed that there as you well. Go. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, we've got a fun one, um, all the way from Monte Monterey. 
um, from oh. Eddie. So he's saying he wants, uh, they're wanting to be a good Scottish citizen. What do they need to do that? <laughs> so straight off the bat, you need to love haggis and wear a kilt all the time. That is, that is essential. And vegetarian so, yeah. haggis is available. Yeah. And it's actually yeah. really, really good. Excellent. Yeah. What other kind of Scottish culture events happen that we could I think suggest. the biggest thing for me actually is um, Scottish country dancing, going to a Cayley. Yep. Yeah. Um, we have a Cayley Society mm. at University of Glasgow and yep. I know at some point during freshers like the international mm. students mm. have an, an international Cayley mm. where you can all come together. I'm not explaining what Cayley is. A Cayley is a, <laughs> <laughs> it's a traditional Scottish dance where, that we all learn from primary school all the way up and it's a really it's a brilliant social event. Yeah. Like, there's nothing like it. I don't think. Yeah. So I come from England, so I wasn't <laughs> aware of what a Kaylee was before I came to Glasgow. I actually thought it was called Seedler because I wasn't quite <laughs> yeah. sure of the name for it. But um, it's something you'll get really accustomed mm -hmm. to. It is it's a really big event. It happens all the time at the university. Yeah. I think one of the best nights for it is Burns Night, which I can't remember when that is. Twenty fifth of January. <laughs> yeah. You can tell I'm from England. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, Kayleys are a really really cool yeah. thing to get involved in. Um, you don't have to know how to Kaylee at all. Not Normally the mm -hmm. band will call out the moves, so you you don't actually need to know anything. You just need to throw yourself in and, and enjoy it. I mean, I think the other thing to mention is probably uh, Iron Brew. <laughs> yep. I mean, Come to love me. it. <laughs> it's a, another great Scottish staple. Um, yeah. I'm not sure what, what else do we think. There's a lot of stereotypes that probably a lot of people yeah. do think of, but <laughs> yeah. when you get to Glasgow, you realise there's so much more to that yeah. than, than yeah. just the stereotypes. We do love a stereotype. We do yeah. love, We do That's quite true. like haggis on a roll in the morning. <laughs> we love iron brew in the morning. Um, but yeah, but there's also so much more kind of modern stuff as well. Mm -hmm. So even things down to like the kind of the music. Scot Scotland loves its music. Fantastic. Glasgow in particular mm -hmm. adores its music. Yeah. Um, from things like Freshers Week when we have gigs um, to yeah. big festivals mm -hmm. and stuff yeah. as well. So, Absolutely. Yeah. I'm National Geographic actually just named it one of the top places for gigs. Ah, there you go. There you go. We found for you. So yeah, <laughs> Glasgow is yes, it's good for the kind of stereotypes. You'll see all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. going on, but yeah. you also get some good real stuff mm -hmm. in yeah. there as well. Um, so that's a good the fun stuff. <laughs> Stuff is <laughs> we've said that um, we've now been asked a wee question about how flexible degrees are. Another fantastic thing about Glasgow, so mm -hmm. hold horses here. Um, so they're going to be studying human biology, but would like to maybe change to zoology. Um, who, I'll answer this. Yes. I think um, so. At University of Glasgow, you, you have the option in your first year to do three different subjects. Um, I started off doing digital media and sociology in my first year, and then I decided to do Italian just for fun. Um, I could have had the option to change to Italian if I wanted to, but I decided I really liked my degree subject, so I kept going with that. And then in my second year, I picked up first year computing science as well. And so out of the four colleges at the University of Glasgow, I actually studied subjects from three of them, which I thought was, yeah. it was really good, a really good way to get like, loads of different experiences and learning different teaching styles mm -hmm. um, and it was really interdisciplinary I found. It's quite flexible to change your degree, um, you'll have to check with your school and college mm -hmm. into how what the entry requirements yeah. are and you might have sure. to, like because yeah. if you want to be in the College of Arts you have to do like 80 credits of 120 in your first mm -hmm. year to make sure mm -hmm. you can be in the College of Arts. So each different subject will have we rules like that but speak to your advisor and it's yeah. actually really easy to do. I've got a really good example of that actually so I did earth science when I was um, doing my degree mm -hmm. and um, I did things which were quite similar to it as you, can, as you say yeah. you tend to do things which are quite interdisciplinary with your main subjects so I did geography but there was one person in my class who ends up being top of the class actually and he originally started doing music and then oh, wow. he decided to change over to earth science or geology so you, you can't you do really have that opportunity yeah. if you if you really use your flexible subjects mm -hmm. well, yeah. you, you may get to second year and go, actually, you know what, this isn't for me, I'll, I'll go yeah. and do this other subject, and, and I, it is absolutely possible. I know someone who started off doing maths and then through society realised he really loved music mm -hmm. and he changed his degree completely yeah. based on what he yeah, loved at society. Definitely one of the best things yeah, I would say about Glasgow. Absolutely. It's the same with me, I applied to, originally I was doing a joint degree, but then I realised, so I was doing a joint degree in history of art and business management, then actually after third year I decided that I really, really like the history of art component a lot more so I actually swapped at that point as well so there is a lot of flexibility mm -hmm. and I think it like you said it's one of the strong points of being in Glasgow especially if maybe you're sitting there thinking I really like art subjects or I really like social sciences but you're mm. not 100% set on yeah. something so it is one of the best things about being here yeah and as Scott said so it might just be that you have 
from school decided yes you want to study this subject but then you get to uni and fancy something else and being able to move about mm -hmm. within the subjects the, the things that you actually love and have a passion for that's why that person yeah. probably became mm -hmm. the top of the class because yeah. they realised that's what yeah. they wanted exactly. to do yeah. Yeah. you're not always going to mm -hmm. uh, pick the right subject for you first time and at Absolutely. Glasgow you, you have that ability to actually make that decision whereas there are a lot of other universities mm -hmm. especially down yeah. south where you, you are stuck with essentially mm -hmm. the subject yeah subject that you signed up for yeah yeah so, so yeah. that that is a fantastic element of it uh, and just to kind of uh, reiterate as well for the human biology if you're doing any sort of life science at glasgow um you'll be doing exactly the same in the first two years and then you can specialize in your third year so um if you apply to human biology um you could then move on uh, into zoology later on so that's no, no hassle at all um, we are getting loads and loads of questions coming in oh, so that's well. good thank you very much <laughs> for all these uh people from all over as well fantastic uh, we have asia um I I'm an Italian girl who will be studying business and management at university. How they would like to better understand how exams work and how to achieve achieve better results. Oof, that's a, that's a, that's a big question. question. That's a big question. <laughs> so how do exams work? So it depends on the course that you're going to do. So some ex uh, courses they can be assessed throughout the course. So basically, you might have class tests during term time and then an essay and an end of uh, degree or an end of class exam. Some courses might be exam only, so you won't be assessed at all during term time. But all of your grades will come from an end of course exam so at Glasgow we've got two exam diets so we've got one in December just uh, before we split up for winter break and then our second exam diet is uh, kind of April May time yeah. um, so you've got those kind of types of assessments in terms of doing well in your course I think one of the best pieces of advice I got when I started Glasgow was to get organized and get an organizer either it can be your eye calendar and your phone or if you prefer like an actual physical diary mm -hmm. get that and the minute you get your deadlines from your course so the minute you start your courses you're going to get all your deadlines for your tests for your essays for your assignments uh, the exam timetable tends to be released quite early as well mm -hmm. just get yeah. those diary get those dates in your diary and start planning ahead mm -hmm. do not leave things to the last minute you know if you know <laughs> we all do it <laughs> once and then we never do it yeah, again yeah. you'll try yeah once to yeah. do like three essays overnight and you'll never want to repeat that mistake again but it is really good to plan ahead mm -hmm. and make sure and it really is good just look at the date it's due in and then plan from that yeah. point onwards yeah. and it also means that then you can see how much time you can actually spend on the fun side of university so when we're talking about joining clubs societies mm -hmm. if you want to have a part-time job it is so much easier to manage if you just yeah. sit down and do that right mm -hmm. at the beginning and don't leave things to the last yeah. minute I think um, to add to that, yeah. <clears throat> especially if you're a first year coming in, first year is a real opportunity to kind of set your own standards, mm -hmm. set your own yeah. pace, your, your routine, and try to get into that headspace, you know, this is how I'm going to tackle university, this is how I'm going to tackle assessments and um, exams, mm -hmm. and it's a real good chance to kind of, yeah, as I said, set your standard for the four years that you're going to be here, mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah. Cool. yeah. Um, everyone says it, but do not leave things to the last minute. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't, Don't do, do it. it. <laughs> Absolutely not. In my fourth year, I had to hand in 17,000 words in one week. And I should have started months beforehand. Yeah. So don't yeah. make my mistake and please sleep. Yeah. Yeah. One all-nighter and that'll be, you'll be done. You yeah. won't yeah. do it ever yeah. again. Yeah. So, or even just don't have an all-nighter and just learn from the mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've made that mistake for you. Just prepare well in advance, yeah. I think, That's, is the main yeah. thing. But first year is also a good opportunity to realise what that means mm -hmm. because you may actually not quite understand because of experience you know how much time you need to dedicate to an assessment or to revising for an exam mm -hmm. and once you establish that now that will set you up really well yeah. for honours. And so, also yeah. don't forget that if you are struggling you can go speak to people like I've cried in my advisor's office so many times <laughs> but every time it's helped um, struggling with an essay, struggling with an exam, just even things you might need clarification on. Mm -hmm. um, once I asked for help with yeah. an essay and the guy basically sent me, the guy, my professor so um, sent, basically sent me a full outline and that was yeah. one of the best grades There's I ever got. There's plenty of pastoral so support yeah, available. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Asking for help support. is really important. Like, just because you're at university doesn't mean you should know how to do everything immediately. Like, it's all a learning curve. Exactly. Well, the tables are about to be turned uh, for you, Cal, because someone is coming to you for oh. Uh, oh. support. <laughs> um, so, Zuzka has, has seen that you mentioned just did digital media. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, they're also considering it. And... Mm -hmm. They're just asking, is it very computer science-y? Is it very coding -y? No, um, <laughs> it's <good>. not. <laughs> I can answer this because I did digital media and I did computer science as well. And computer science 
it wasn't for me, I don't think. Um, it was a lot of programming, a lot of writing my own coding and stuff. And I really enjoyed it, but the digital media side was, it was so diverse. We did archives, we did libraries, we did, we went on trips to Bannockburn and we learned all about interactive museum exhibits. And, oh, well. So yeah. if you're not a big computer, yeah. computer person, it's absolutely no, fine. But you do get, you get, do get taught to code as well. Like I learned HTML, CSS from, from digital media as well. Okay. And so it is, you can, it's really important as well, no, really useful, because you can choose to specialise in different areas. So if you really enjoy the coding side, you can do a course that mm. allows you to write websites. If you really enjoy the libraries and archives side, you can just do courses in libraries and archives. So mm. I really enjoy digital yeah. media because it's so diverse. And in first and second year, you get to, you get a couple of weeks on every single topic, um, ranging from video games to like okay. humanity and trans humanity. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Sounds great. good. <laughs> I'm sold on it already. Um, <laughs> excellent. Um, okay, so one of the questions that does seem to pop up quite a lot so far um, is people asking about enrolment, um, how they can enrol, what do they do, they're just general confusion over enrolment. What is the plan for that? So enrolment, I must mm -hmm. admit, um, initially, especially if you're a first year, mm -hmm. it can be a bit tricky, but first thing I'd say is have a bit of patience with it, mm -hmm. um, because what you'll end up finding is that you'll need to pick classes for your first subject, and then you'll start getting into the territory where you pick your second and third subjects, and because of the flexibility we have here at Glasgow, you won't get it right first time. There may be some kind of clashes, but that's the whole point of the timetabling mm -hmm. systems, that you can try and navigate it in a way where you're placing classes in free slots, and then therefore you start forming a timetable. Um, it can be a little bit tricky, and I promise you it gets better. It really mm -hmm. does. Um, the university are working on trying to improve this system as well. We, mm -hmm. we, we know that that is, uh, is something that we need to work on. But as I said, just because you've not done it before, especially if you're first year, it can seem a little bit daunting. Uh, I don't know if anyone yeah, else can. A couple of wee IT things as well. Um, don't use the back button in your browser when you're enrolling. Always use a back button in the My Campus system because it will just take you right back to the beginning. Good piece of and also, yeah. don't have it open in too many tabs at once. Or at least if you are, don't work from too many tabs because you'll lose all your progress there. Yeah. Um, it is manageable. All the courses are timetabled so that you can yeah. do them all. But if you're having troubles, you can email yeah. um, your course convener. There is a bit of a website that you can go on and double check this. So if you just um, search for the new student page, uh, I think we're going to include the link on this um, post as well. So you can click on that and that's where you'll have all the information about all the stuff that new students need to know yeah. about coming to Glasgow. Mm -hmm. I think it's worth saying as well, um, not every single subject is compatible. There will be things that just mm -hmm. won't work mm -hmm. because you know there's only so many hours in the week and you need to make sure that you're picking subjects that can can be tailored to your first subject and your second subject. So I think just expect that there might be things, especially if they're completely different to what your initial subject is, yes. that you just may not be able to, to timetable together. That's fine. You've got an opportunity to do that second year if you'd like to. Um, I think it's also worth saying that uh, enrolment is your opportunity to you know pick your subjects. And, and I would say the sooner you do it, the better. Mm -hmm. It's definitely the best yeah. piece of advice. If, if, if you haven't done it yet and you're thinking, actually, I might leave it a couple of weeks, don't do it as soon as you can. Yeah. Just get that off, get that weight off your shoulders, you know, so you can know what it is that you're going to be mm -hmm. expecting to do when you come. But worst comes to worst, there are drop-in sessions starting from next week, I think, in the round reading room, mm -hmm. where people will be able to help you with enrolment. And I didn't enroll until the week of Freshers' yeah. Week. Um, not completely, because I had a time to clash and wanted to resolve it. But in my in first week of Freshers, I sat down with someone and she has helped me enroll and it was really mm. good and yeah. helped me see all my options. Plenty of support. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that lots available. of support again. Yeah. One of the ones you kept bringing up there was timetables. Mm -hmm. So do you know mm -hmm. what, roughly when students do get their timetables? They get their timetables when they enroll. Yeah, yeah. There you go. perfect. Yeah. Um, excellent. So timetables, you'll get all them as you, as you enrol. Um, again, absolutely loads of questions, so thank you for keep asking all these. Uh, going back to sports, um, do you offer different levels of play? Um, so can you play a bit more casually or do you need to be like yes. Olympic standard? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll try to speak on behalf of, uh, of GUSA, <laughs> Glasgow University Sports Association. So yes, um, there are certainly different levels in every club. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, if you if you're not quite into the competitive side of things, uh, or you know, if you're very new to a sport, you can play recreationally. Um, you know, all the sports clubs are equipped to treat everyone as if they've never played that sport before mm -hmm. and then you can go through your, your university career getting better and better and perhaps playing competitively uh, when you when you feel like you can do that but there's absolutely no pressure to be really good at a sport either you know you I, I think I tried lacrosse and a bunch of 
different things that I never even mm -hmm. knew existed until I came to university. There are 50 sports clubs after all, there'll be things that you haven't even heard of. Um, so yeah, it's very flexible, it, it's very catering to different abilities and you know, if you, if you do like football and you don't want to play competitively, there are leagues for example where you can play just with other groups of students just, just casually. So there's lots of examples of that throughout Goosa, so yeah. Cool. And even if you do want to play a sport but you just do, do just want to kind of do a wee run about, uh, we do have a Quidditch team as well. We, we do have a campus that looks a lot like Hogwarts uh, and we do play to that and you can play Quidditch at Glasgow. It is amazing. <laughs> yeah, I highly recommend it. Yeah. There you go. Um, perfect. So we've got a question about postgrad. Um, so if you're coming to Glasgow as a postgrad, what is life as a postgrad like at Glasgow and what kind of experience can they... Um, experience yeah. well um, I did a postgraduate at Glasgow and it's in a lot of ways it's really similar to being an undergraduate you get the same kind of support um, it will depend on what course you're doing so uh, whether you're doing a research postgraduate whether you're doing a top postgraduate but it's I really loved it it was brilliant um, especially that when you're coming to a postgrad you're usually coming to a subject that you're really really interested in and most postgrads you also tend to have a lot more focus in what you do, you get to pick what you tend to do and what areas you specialise in, so it was a brilliant experience for me and like I said there's loads of support mm -hmm. from advisors of studies, your course co uh, coordinator and I think one of the big differences between an undergrad and a postgrad is that you work with academics a lot more closely, so I'm I still get in touch with my dissertation supervisor from my master's course, like he's basically feels like family now because you do work so closely with them and yeah it's fantastic and Glasgow's got such great resources as well because we've got a brilliant library for different subjects, we've got extra, mm -hmm. so I did history of art so there's the history of art resource room as well which is basically a library just for that subject so it is really really fantastic, I would absolutely recommend it. And in terms of Freshers' Week, um, I know postgrads who come along the Freshers' Week as well because technically you are a new student. Mm -hmm. um, so feel free to join in, um, join in societies, join in clubs. I think the more you get involved, the mm -hmm. better it is, especially if you are doing a postgrad and you are going to be doing all of research. Mm -hmm. It helps to have things that you can just leave the library, leave your office and go and do something else for a while. I think it's also worth yeah. saying that um, you know, if you are a postgraduate incoming student watching this, we do have something called Postgraduate Fortnight, which mm -hmm. happens at the same time as Freshers' Week, and it's a bit more specific mm -hmm. to postgraduate students. You know, if, if you if you think some of the activities during Freshers' Week isn't your thing, absolutely fine. Um, as we said, please feel free to come to Freshers' Week. It is for everyone that mm -hmm. is new to the university. Um, but when it comes to specific PG uh, PG activities, we have Postgraduate Fortnight, which is the week of Freshers' Week and the week afterwards and all of that all of those activities happen in uh, the Gilchrist Postgraduate Club which is in the main building of the university and it's a really good way to meet other postgraduate students. Um, the only other thing I'd say to that is I was a Masters by Research student after my undergrad and um, I would highly recommend it if you're, if you're thinking of doing research at the university, you know, this is a research-led mm -hmm. institution, we are uh, really good at doing that, all our teaching is um, led by research, mm -hmm. all our academics are expected to do a certain level of research, so it's a, it's a great research environment to be a part of, if, especially if you're thinking about doing a PhD or a Masters mm -hmm. by Research here, I would absolutely highly recommend it. Yeah. Perfect, cool. Uh, okay, so we've got some more questions coming in, um, some of them from Melania and Dora, uh, just asking about kind of credits, so as an undergraduate, is there a kind of a limit of 120 credits, uh, Dora's looking to see if she can also take a kind of additional language course on top of that as a short course, any advice from the panel? Sure. Um, I think the 120 credits, not 100% sure, but the 120 credits I think is a cap. Mm -hmm. um, I would not recommend doing more than 120 credits because there'll be weeks, exams, essay time when you will be overwhelmed anyway. Um, obviously, do your work, start your work early, but things happen and you will have to do some late nights. And I don't think with more than 120 credits, it would be physically possible to do. Okay. Um, saying that, though, there are language courses that are advertised to a lot of, excuse me, a lot of the colleges. I think you'll get an email about them in your first or second week here. Um, Top yeah. my, top my head. I'm pretty sure you do. Yeah. The, there are um, short courses that you can do mm -hmm. in the languages. I'm not entirely sure yeah. where that happens <laughs> or where, but, but I've seen emails. all yeah. the information is on the website. If they do become available, there is the opportunity, mm -hmm. I think, at some point to do things like that. 
Sorry. Perfect. But yeah. also if you're doing, uh, you can do it as your third subject in first year. So yeah. there's a lot of uh, language courses that we do offer that you can then basically take on as mm -hmm. that extra subject yeah. that you can do in first year. So you can even do one in first year, one in second year if you really enjoy it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And sure. there's clubs and societies as well. I picked up British Sign Language in as a um, society yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was yeah. great. Yeah. Got it all, but it was great. <laughs> Yeah. Cool. Um, okay, so we're moving on to Maddie's question, uh, who's just asking about accommodation, and uh, what, I'll extend our question from um, when does the offers come through to also what's accommodation like and what's it like in Glasgow, how far from campus? Oh. <laughs> so, so, so I, I, I with, think I'll start yeah. with yeah. this. Um, <laughs> If I'm perfectly honest, I'm not entirely sure when the actual offers come through. Um, I believe they're staggered. I think they're coming through as they speak. Yes, yes. so um, at, at this current moment in time. <laughs> in terms of the accommodation at the university, um, we do have a, a couple um, really in demand ones. You know, um, Murano Street Village, for example, is our yep. biggest capacity. Mm -hmm. um, uh, student halls, which is for predominantly first years. Uh, we've got places like Queen Margaret. Drive and Winton Drive, um, and then we have uh, spots of other yeah, uh, halls around. Area, I think yeah. those are the kind of two main ones um, in terms of capacity. Uh, there are differences between them. So, mm -hmm. to give you an example, Murano Street, um, the actual flats themselves have higher capacity, so you can be in a flat of 12 people. Mm -hmm. um, so, if you quite like uh, the idea of meeting 12 people who are going to be living with you through the year and you're quite a sociable person and you quite like that in your living environment, then absolutely highly recommend Murano Street. Um, Queen Margaret. Uh, the flats are a little bit smaller, but the actual, uh, you know, y y the beds are a little bit bigger, and, and you get so an you get an ensuite. <laughs> yes, um, so Murano, there are shared bathrooms. Yeah. Um, all, the, all the halls are of good quality, but it just it completely depends on your own preference. Mm -hmm. So I think the main thing between those two halls is if you're if you want a kind of a bit more of a social environment, you go for Murano. If you uh, like your own space and you know you like having an ensuite mm -hmm. and a slightly bigger bed but you're happy to live with yeah. less people, I think Queen Margaret's the one to go for. There obviously are a lot of other halls um, available. Mm -hmm. Off the top of my head, can't quite think of them all um, just it's now. Calvin Hargate Calvin as well, Hargate, and yes, Finiston. Yeah. Yeah. Some others. Yes, oh, Wilson yeah. Hall, that's Wolfson. catered. Yeah. Yes, Wilson Hall's in... Yeah. So if you can't cook, Wilson, Wilson Hall's one yes. for you. Yes, yes Cater's Hall, <laughs> just, so, just yeah. in Gas Cube. Mm -hmm. um, and they do so, come yeah. at a bigger range of kind of prices from about, I think yeah. it's about nine to eight pounds yeah. a week to about 178 yeah. pounds a week. That's the kind of uh, broad mm -hmm. kind of spectrum you'd be yeah. looking at. Obviously, as you start with the kind of nine to eight pounds a week, you're probably sharing a lot more, sharing your bathroom, yeah. Yeah. sharing your living space. Sharing the bedroom as well. As you pay a little yeah, bit more, well. yeah, you would probably be a bit more yeah. on your own. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I would say is a lot of first years do kind of consider the potential of going to private halls because of price or, mm -hmm. you know, there might be a whole manner of reasons to do that. But w if you do have the opportunity to apply for um, University of Glasgow, uh, halls, I would highly recommend it because again, similar to Freshers Week, those halls will mainly have first year mm -hmm. students in, all in the same boat. Everyone's new to their independence, everyone's new to making friends. Um, you know, yeah. I, again, some of my best friends that I met at university, I met in halls from day one mm -hmm. um, when I was moving in. So it is, it's a very good opportunity. So if you're kind of umming and ahhing between private yeah. halls or University of Glasgow halls, I would recommend for the experience as much as anything else to go with the University of Glasgow. And included in the price of your University of Glasgow halls, you get the U of G sport facilities for free up at Glasgow yes. yeah. mm -hmm. and on the main campus yeah. as well. Cool. Yeah. Um, we've got some nice comments coming in, so thank you. Yeah. Um, Glasgow's a lovely city with beautiful people and tasty Aww. food. Um, <laughs> I agree, uh, so thank you for that. Always nice to hear that. Um, very quick one from Ben. Would you recommend buying a fresher's band now or wait until you get here? I would just... I would just get it now, to be quite mm -hmm. honest. Um, you do get a flurry of people who will arrive at halls, for example, and like, oh, are you getting the band? Are you? Oh, OK, I'll get the band, but um, I would just get out of the way now because a lot of freshers, most of them will stay on campus for Freshers Week mm -hmm. because it is the best opportunity to meet people and have a good time and experience the campus. Um, there's, I, I would basically say there's no reason not to get it now. 
pretty much. So yeah. Cool. Um, on to the next one. Um, when are EU students expected to arrive, and do they need to attend orientation programs? So that's like essentially for anyone outside from yeah. coming from Scotland or. I'm not sure when they're supposed to arrive. Maybe these guys could provide a bit of info on that. But what I do know is that international students and EU students, people that are coming from abroad, will have to uh, come in the week before Freshers' Week for a set of orientation and induction activity because there, obviously there are some separate things that may have to be discussed and run through with you. Um, I know that happens the week before Freshers' Week, so yeah. In terms of timings, I don't know. Do we know that? It is on the website. Yes. yes. Um, <laughs> If in doubt. gla.ac.uk forward slash international. Um, we run a pickup service from the airport as well, so we can get you yeah. to the campus. Oh, awesome. um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think all the information yeah. will be online for yeah. that yeah. one. But online. yes, so probably the, we'll have to come a bit earlier. So the orientation programme and the kind of welcome programme does begin on the kind of 10th of September. Uh, and from that, there'll be kind of yeah. a few different mm -hmm. things happening to make you welcome in Glasgow. Um, fantastic. Yeah, um, I just think it just very briefly, it's also worth mentioning as well, um, the SRC um, from the weekend between International Orientation and Freshers Week, we put on a separate suite of um, activities during the daytime on the weekend just to kind of get you a bit more accustomed to Glasgow and get you ready for Freshers Week and so that you could potentially meet other people that may have come from where you've come from as well. So it's a really good kind of weekend to get involved in. So set aside some time for that and that will you'll get all the information about that with the International Orientation Programme as well. So. Cool. Yeah. Uh, next question up is from Stefano, um, so thanks for that. Um, how will I get class material? Are classes recorded? Or is the tutors, do they put stuff online for you? What is the game? For so, that? some lectures are recorded and some aren't. It's all at discretion of the school or college. Mm -hmm. um, if they're all online, it will be on our virtual learning environment called Moodle. Um, so that will involve all your lecture notes, it will involve some of your seminar readings. Um, but I did art subjects and social sciences, so it might be different across mm -hmm. the other sciences. Mm -hmm. But for me, we were emailed reading lists, and we had compulsory te texts and non-compulsory texts that you just do for further reading. But all of these were available from the library, so I didn't have to buy any textbooks at all, which yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, I mean, the majority of stuff that you'll need for your lectures and for your course, it will all generally be put on Moodle. Yeah. Um, a lot of lecturers will tend to put their slides on after, um, just for reference for when you're revising. Mm -hmm. And you know, as Cal said, uh, most of the reading, or if not all of the reading that you're expected to do, will be available in the library. Some people like to buy their own books. We do have second-hand bookshops on campus as well. If that's if you rather a bit of um, you know a book that's in mm -hmm. front of you and you get to access it at all times. But as I said, the library yeah. is pretty well equipped for all your course reading materials. So yeah. yeah, and so you can actually buy kind of old. Um, textbooks and everything yeah. from students who have actually studied at Glasgow. Mm -hmm. uh, so sometimes you can even get some of their notes in the margin so you can pick <laughs> up some, you can learn from students fr that have yeah. come before mm -hmm. you. Um, so loads of stuff. And you can even sell your old books back, mm -hmm. can't yeah. you? Yeah, again, at the second-hand bookshop, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That's pretty good for that. Perfect. Um, also, a question coming in about the school, the university newspaper, and if we have one. Yes, yes. yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so our university newspaper is called the Glasgow Guardian. Um, it is independent of the SRC but it's housed in our building we mm -hmm. offer support where we can um, but we've got no editorial say in anything that they do so if journalism is your thing there are a lot of really great opportunities to get involved in the Glasgow Guardian whether it whether or not you want to just be a contributor or you want to be editing a specific section, you know, mm -hmm. if sport's your thing or you want to review theatre, that's also a great place to do that. Or if you want to become an editor-in-chief in a few years' time, that is it's a really good thing to, mm -hmm. to aspire to be a part of as well because yeah. the Glasgow Guardian is quite well known in, in the world of journalism across Britain. Yeah. We've had people who have been editors-in-chief go on to work for several quite hiking newspapers mm -hmm. as well so it's a really good opportunity to get involved in if that's kind of, if that's your thing yeah. and there's other student media as well so there's gust the glasgow university student television who do sort of more like news style broadcasts mm -hmm. and they can do like little fun drama clips as well yes. and there's also sub city radio as well mm -hmm. for those who are more like auditory journalism so yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a there's also it's also worth saying some of uh, our unions have um, their own papers mm -hmm. uh, but yeah the main one on campus is the Glasgow Guardian um, for the student media side of things just refer to the SLC website and you'll get all the information on that there 
But the most exciting thing about the newspaper is it is actually a physical newspaper. Yes, it's great. You can hold it. You can. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 properly good. Yeah, and it's free. And it's free. free. Yeah, and it's free. (laughs) Another thing, Glaswegian people do love. We do love a free thing in Glasgow. As you'll find out at Freshers, you'll get all the pens, all the freebies you could ever want. Um, Okay, so a question in from Adam. Um, So thank you, Adam. Do students have time to get from class to class? What are the timetables normally like at Glasgow? Yes, so so basically the way that the timetables are organised, most classes should finish five to the hour and most classes shouldn't start till five past the hour. So that's basically to give you that leeway if you do have to go from class to class. In my first year, don't ask me how I managed to do this. All of my classes were back to back on opposite sides of the campus, which was a bit of a jog, but you do get uh, used to it. uh, And you do get really fit as well coordinating (laughs) campus. So it is doable because I literally had to go from one side of the campus to the other and then back again. Mm -hmm. And it was absolutely fine. And most lecturers do know that they do have to allow for that as well. Yeah, there is an acknowledgement with the staff that, you know, people will be travelling from Mm -hmm. lectures Mm -hmm. and, you know, the campus is quite tight. But, you know, if you do end up Mm -hmm. in a situation where you go from one side to the other, it's still very manageable. So, yeah. Cool. Um, okay, so next question up. Um, what is the city of Glasgow like for students? Is it fun? Is it interesting? Is it safe? What is Glasgow like? It's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. And that's um, it. I that's mean, open. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've all stayed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Six years now. Yeah. But um, uh, what, what we'll say. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I will say about Glasgow, it is a really good student city. Um, That is one thing I did notice when I was going through my suite of open days when I was first trying to figure out what university I'd like to go to. Um, You know, we have something in... uh, Glasgow's based on the west end of of the city. Um, Sorry, the university is based on the west end of the city. And uh, one amazing thing that comes with that is you could be walking down the street doing your shopping and you'll bump into five or six people that you know. Everyone's kind of based in the same area, which is really nice. But you also have the opportunity to go actually into the city centre where it is very student orientated you know we have three universities based at Glasgow yeah. and for good reason it's a very good city to cater mm-hmm. to the needs of students so yeah yeah three universities and loads of colleges as well mm-hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah perfect um, so just to, to be mentioned there are loads of questions coming in so if we're not going to be able to answer them here uh, we will try and get back to you uh, on the, the, the kind of Facebook comment section so don't worry your questions will be answered yeah. um, even if it's not by us um, we were going to kind of run out of time just now, but we're going to run on a wee bit longer, uh, so you get even more time of us um, <laughs> to ask any final questions. So please get them in. Um, what else? Da, da, da. Yes. What kind of what kind of websites? What kind of um, materials are there for new students? Just to reiterate, we've talked about the kind of new student website. What else can they yeah. go on? There's for? a new student website um, which has all the information you could ever need. It's all about the city, it's about the campus, it's about all the learning environments you're going to have to use. There's a similar one for international students, um, which is pretty much the exact same, but has more sort of specific tailored information there. There is the new student welcome app, which I run, which is great, so read all my content. Um, and that has, is going to have all the events in Freshers Week and beyond. So it's going to be like a central hub for all mm-hmm. the events throughout the university. Yeah. Um, it's got information on security, it's got information on it's got campus maps, it's got everything. Um, there is a timetable room finder app, which you'll be able to download in future weeks, um, which is going to have how to get around where you're yeah, going. It's really useful, actually. Um, Moodle is your virtual learning yeah. environment mm-hmm. we've spoken about before, which yeah, is where you get all your lectures, mm-hmm. all your information, mm-hmm. your course mm-hmm. notes board. There is My Glasgow, which is your central hub, and it has notices, it's how you get to Moodle, it's how you get to your emails. Um, Freshers Week page. Yeah. Freshers Week page. Yeah. So yeah. Lo- loads, loads of stuff <laughs> that you can find that information on. Yeah. All the things you can find on your phone. Yeah. Download yeah. the app, as Carl said, uh, and then you'll have it all in your pocket, which is yeah. pretty fantastic. Um, maybe some very final questions. Just asking, Catherine's asking about uh, are there jobs on campus that students can apply for and do, and can they balance their studies with mm-hmm. a job? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... Um, to answer the, the last part of that first, um, it is very manageable mm-hmm. to work a part-time job throughout university. Most people I know, actually, yeah. they definitely yeah. do, do 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 that. Mm-hmm. And, it, you know, it's quite easy to do as long as you're 
you're sensible about your studies and making sure you're prioritizing that as well. But as I said, m most people can do part-time work comfortably. In terms of jobs, um, first and foremost, yes, you can get jobs on campus. Um, you know, if, if you're wanting something which is a bit closer to the university then there are loads of opportunities to actually do a bit of work uh, you've got things like student ambassadors um, you know you can work yeah. as a brand ambassador for the career service for example there's plenty of opportunities mm -hmm. on campus and uh, places to look for that are the SRC job shop which is on our website uh, the career service mm -hmm. also do tend to put up a lot of um, adverts for part-time jobs on campus as well that's the other go-to place um, there are also a lot of opportunities just off campus you know, as I said, we live in the West End. There are a lot of uh, bars and um, you know retail shops that that are always looking for staff because of the high turnover that we get at the West End. So yeah, there's plenty of opportunity for that. Um, again, if you're an international student, that certain rules may apply differently. But mm. as as I said before, um, there are opportunities on campus that you still can get involved in. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think the main place to look for. Um, shops would be the Career Service Internship yeah. Hub and you can sign up to the newsletter that they send yeah, out every exactly. couple of weeks which has all the jobs exactly. you ever need. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so that is us just about to run out of time. Um, before I kind of um, ask my very final question to the panel, of describing your best things at Glasgow in three words, um, oh I'd just like to... <laughs> So while they think about that, I'd like to just remind you um, there is a Facebook group for you to join um, for freshers so you can talk to each other, meet new friends, meet people who are doing the same course as you. Um, definitely get online with that. Uh, as I said, we've, we're going to have the link to the new student page on this post, so click on that. You'll find out everything you need to know about enrolment, orientation. That will all be there. Um, and that is pretty much it. But So Glasgow in three words. Oh, no, I've only got two. Um, <laughs> life-changing, engaging, and interesting. Fantastic. Oh, uh, <laughs> amazing, uh, friendly, and team, because we're all part of Team U of G. There you go. <laughs> there are. Easy as. <laughs> well, you saw one of mine, because I was going to say friendly. Oh, yeah. um, it's definitely exciting, and also green, because it is our yes, dear green place. Yes, actually. So dear dear green place. Dear. One of the words, um, they've used absolutely fantastic ones. One of the ones I'll use is socks. Uh, and that is to <laughs> some of you who may have offers from us, may have a, a received a pair of socks in the mail. And I don't know if I can get the cameras to pan down and have a look at the socks that we are all wearing. Um, they're very fashionable, very snazzy, and a beautiful colour. Um, so these are the socks that everybody on campus wears all the time. Um, all, <laughs> all the time. All the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Never take them off. Not really, but please do sport them take photos of you wearing them, put them on Instagram, tag us in. We would love to see you wearing your new socks as you're kind of coming to Glasgow. Wear them the first time you come on campus. That would be fantastic. <laughs> you make loads of friends. <laughs> yeah. You'll make all the friends with those socks. Um, so yeah, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Oh, people are bringing me a birthday. Oh, thank I you very much. I thank Gavin for yesterday. <laughs> yes, thanks very much. Again, they said they wouldn't do this, but they've embarrassed me once more. <laughs> thank you very much. No better way to spend a birthday than with with yourselves from all around the world so thank you very very much for that um so yes and um, from monica scott cal and me um it's been an absolute pleasure answering your questions um so yeah thank you very much and we'll see you Cheers. soon bye